Salutation. My name is Freighter Ophidrion. Among other things. Chapter 2 of The Tarot. A Key to the Wisdom of the Ages. A Classic Guide by Paul Foster Case. Occult Meaning of Numbers. Remember how important this is. In this chapter, we shall consider the occult significance of the numbers from 0 to 10, with particular reference to the esoteric meanings of the so-called Arabic numerals. As a matter of fact, these numerals were invented by Hindu priests, from whom they were borrowed and slightly altered by the Arab mathematicians, who introduced them into Europe. The key to the meaning of the numerals is the diagram which appears as the fr front frontispiece oh, yeah, of this book. I don't know how to pronounce that word. F front is piece. The piece is, is it, it's in the front, all right? Front is piece. Readers of these pages who are familiar with occult symbolism will perceive that the basis of the construction of this diagram is the six-pointed star, known as the Shield of David and the Star of the Macrocosm. Years ago, one of the theosophical masters declared that the system of six circles, tangent to a central seventh, is a key to the construction of the cosmos. At that time, the master's meaning was not grasped by the student to whom the statement was made. I hope the inclusion of this diagram in the front of the book may stimulate some of my readers to further research. Want of space forbids my developing the various details. I shall therefore contain myself by saying that this one diagram is a key to the geometrical construction of the Great Pyramid, to a very close approximation to the squaring of the circle, to the true occult meaning of the apron worn by Freemasons. It's, it's really cool. There's like so much knowledge in it. It's just a fucking piece of cloth. There's nothing written on it. And there's more knowledge in that thing than fucking most things that come out of SJW's mouth in a month. Ugh, we're losing it. To the correct construction of the Kabbalistic diagram known as the Tree of Life, which has been called a key to all things, and to the proportions of the mysterious vaults in which the body of the founder of the Rosicrucian order is said to have been discovered. These are but a small selection of the mysteries to which this one diagram affords a clue. I shall confine myself to its numerical significance. After all, keys and sometimes open many doors. In Arabic notation, all numbers are rep represented by ten symbols, beginning with zero and ending with nine. They are thus derived from the diagram. So zero, you have an ellipse representing the cosmic egg, whence come all things. Zero is a symbol of the absence of quality quantity, or mass. Thus, it denotes absolute freedom from every limitation whatsoever. It is a sign of the infinite and eternal conscious energy, itself no thing. Though manifested in everything, it is that which was, is, and shall be forever. It, that, but it is nothing we can name, boundless, infinitely, Potential living light. It is the rootless root of all things, of all activities, of all modes of consciousness. In it are included all imaginable and unimaginable possibilities, but it transcends them all. The Kabbalists call it A and no thing, B the boundless sea, limitless light, pure conscious energy above and beyond thought. To us it is super consciousness or over-consciousness, or something like that. Collective human mind, and then some. Gosh, zero. The descending arc of the ellipse on the reader's left 
represents involution, the winding up process whereby limitless light manifests itself in name and form. At B, the lowest point of involution is reached in the mineral kingdom. From B back to A on the right side of the ellipse, the ascending arc represents evolution, the unwinding process. From B to F in the arc of evolution in the inorganic world, F to H is the arc of organic development up through plants to animals, H to D is the arc of organic development from the lowest animal to the highest type of human consciousness at point D. Only a few human beings have reached this point. But the race is nearer to it now than ever before. The arc from D to A is that of conscious expression beyond human levels, the evolution of consciousness or conscious oneness with the divine. Some would call that the omega point. Physicists call that heat death, I think. Thus, the two sides of the ellipse suggest. I'm, you know what? That's so nihilistic, isn't it? Disregard my previous statement. Just listen to what Mr. K says with his 30 plus years of research into the subject. Thus, the two sides of the ellipse suggest the esoteric doctrine of involution or descent and a corresponding evolution or ascent. The ascending arc corresponds to the occult doctrine first the stone, then the plant, then the animal, then the man, and at last the god. And you have number one. In the diagram, the number one is the vertical line from A to B, connecting the extreme height with the extreme depth. Among the many occult meanings of this number are beginning, initiative, originality, unity, singleness, isolation, and the like. In the Kabbalah, it is called the admirable or wonderful intelligence, the supreme crown. To show that one represents the determining ruling directive and volitional aspect of consciousness, this primary mode of consciousness is concealed behind all veils of name and form. It is the consciousness of the true self, or I am, the onlooker, seeing creation through countless eyes, manifesting itself through innumerable personalities. Ageless wisdom teaches that all things are manifestations or projections in time and space of the powers of the I am. In short, the I am, or number one, is the essence, substance, energy, and consciousness expressed in all forms. Everything in the universe is the self-expression of the I am. This is the first principle, the primary existence, the first mover. In and through human personality, it manifests as the waking self-consciousness. Right? That's, that's dope, yeah? Fucking magic. Two. On the diagram, this number begins at C, follows the upper circle through D to the center of the diagram, thence through the lower circle to E, and is completed by the horizontal line from E to F. The meanings of the number include... Duplication, reflection, res receptivity, dependence, alteration, antagonism, and the like. Kabbalists call it wisdom, the reflection of the perfect self-consciousness of the I Am. Wisdom is the mirror wherein the I Am sees itself. The number two is also named illuminating intelligence. It is that which illuminates the personal mind. It is the aspect of universal consciousness which manifests through human personality as grasp of the inner principles of the nature of the one conscious energy. In Hebrew occultism, the number two is also the particular number of the life force in all creatures. Number three. Uh, at this juncture, I'm going to say that you should probably just write down that picture. I read this book a lot, and you know what? That first page is delicate right now. 
go ahead and pause it, draw you a copy. I'm done showing you. Number three, the upper half of this figure is the same as the upper half of two from C through D to the center of the diagram. Its lower half begins at the center of the diagram and follows the lower circle through F and B around to E. Among the meanings of three are multiplication, development, growth, unfoldment, therefore expression. Three signifies the actual outworking of the principles reflected from one by two. In Kabbalah, the number three is understanding, looking forward into the field of manifestation in contrast to wisdom. The number two, which looks back to the self-knowledge of the I am, the number one. Understanding is the concrete application of abstract wisdom, hence three is called the sanctifying intelligence. To convey the idea that through growth or expression comes the perfected manifestation of the potencies latent in the limitless light. On the form side, perfect realization, sanctification, requires perfected organism. In consciousness, it is perfected faculty and function. They, they say that three is the first plane of manifestation, the triangle. It makes sense. That's how many legs you need for a table to be sturdy here. But I also look at another little piece of the Kabbalah. You look at the Tree of Life, you have the first three up there. They have this overlay image where you, you have a person over it, and it has like almost like chakras, correspondences, head and heart and feet. You know, not all seven, but those three are there. But the top three sephiroths are not actually connected to the person's body. And I think it has to do with, like, the step-by-step -step process, you know, overlay it. You have the first three sephiroths, which manifest as the first step of three steps of creation, you know, and fractals. Four. This figure starts with the vertical line of the figure one. A to B on the diagram, and adds two other lines, A to G and G to H. Thus drawn, four shows in its upper portion a triangle, symbol of the number three, and in its lower portion, a T-square, a geometrical symbol of four itself. Triangle and T-square are among the most important instruments of the draftsman. They have occult reference to the esoteric side of geometry. They suggest planning, surveying, topography, and the like. From these considerations are derived the following meanings of number four. Order, measurement, classification, recording, tabulation, and so on. Excuse me. Because of these meanings, Kabbalists make the number four the number of memory, because the life power is perfect memory of its own potencies. Excuse me. Of its own potencies and of the needs of even the least of its centers of expression cannot be supposed to fail, the idea of beneficence, good givingness, is also assigned to number four. Thus, beneficence is not wasteful pro prodigality. Whoa, I don't know the definition of that word is. Look up this one. Um, prodigality. P-R-O-D-I-G-A-L-I-T-Y. All the gifts of the of the life power are measured out. Every center of expression receives exactly what is coming to it, always. Therefore, the number four is called measuring intelligence. Which is interesting to note. There's another little saying I, I think about a lot. You, you have the three <coughs> which create the four which burst open into the 10,000 things. You know, you... you you need to measure your environment to start living in it in any capacity. Like, if you didn't have any accurate means of measuring where an object was, how on earth do you hope to pick it up? Number five. 
on the diagram, the first line of this figure is the horizontal, C to D. The second is vertical, C to I. The third includes five-sixths of the lower circle from I through F and B to E. Meanings of five include meditation, because five is the middle number between one, beginning, and nine, completion. Adaptation means agency, activity, process, and the like. Five is the dynamic law proceeding from abstract order. The number four. To primitive minds, the working of law seems to be the operation of many forces, mostly hostile to man. Hence, five is the number of versatility, and one of its names in Kabbalah is fear. Ignorant persons endeavor to pro propitulate the power they fear. Propit propitiate. Propitiate. That's, uh, is that similar to propagate? Uh, I needs me a dictionary. To propitiate the power they fear. Their sacrifices are the beginning of religious ritual. Hence the number five is the number of religion. Not even. A better, though incompetent, knowledge of law sees it as a relentless, harsh, mechanical expression of mathematical principles, taking no account of human needs and aspirations. This is the interpretation of the materialist, who sees the law as a mighty power. Hebrew sages take account of this also and say that the number five is the number of strength and severity as well as fear. Finally, to seers and sages, law appears as the manifestation of perfect justice, whereby man, whose numeral symbol is also five, may also adapt natural conditions that he may realize progressive liberation from every kind of bondage. Five, then, is the number of versatility, because it shows the changing aspects of the one law, inspiring fear in the ignorant, perceived by the materialist as relentless strength, and understood by the wise as undeviating justice. This one law is the root of all operations of the life power, and is therefore called radical, or is it? Yeah, radical intelligence. Shoot, red! And then five is red, alright, I'm telling you. No, if you, if, you, if you were part of Pythagoras' crew back in the day, you definitely thought five was red, bro. The root consciousness expressed through human personality is this one law of meditation or adaptation. Man can change conditions. This is the secret of his power to realize freedom. Because knowledge is the key to the cage. And this is a cage, is it not? No. Some people say, do they talk about the kingdom of heaven being within your mind? And, by okay, let's, let's overlay. Heaven is burning. It is the flame which lights your world. They also say that Earth is hell. But who are they anyway? My God. Number six. On the diagram, this is a continuous line from D to A, down through the ellipse on the involution curve to B, then around the lower circle to E. Its symmetry suggests the philosophical conception of beauty. This is the direct outcome of ideas expressed by the preceding numerals. A free life power, zero, knowing itself perfectly, one, grasping all possibilities of what it is in itself, two, understanding just how these possibilities may be worked out into expression, three, never forgetting itself or any detail of the perfect order of, it, of its self-manifestation, four, and developing that order through the agency of its perfectly just law or method, five must inevitably be working towards a perfectly symmetrical, balanced, and therefore beautiful result. This idea is implicit in the following meanings of six. 
balance, equilibrium, symmetry, beauty, harmony of opposites, reciprocity, complementary activities, polarity, love. It is named intelligence of mediating influence or intelligence of the separated emanations. So I utilize such a thing when I distinguish between any of my servitors. I know that they are me. Number seven. <laughs> Let's talk about heptads. On the diagram, this is composed of two lines. The first horizontal from C to D, the second diagonal from D to E. To exhaust the meanings of seven will take us as many pages as an encyclopedia. It is the great biblical number, many books in both the Old and New Testaments being written on a plan of sevens, seven chapters, seven subdivisions, and so on. On this point, see the literary introduction in M Melton's Modern Reader's Bible. The more important occult meanings of seven are rest, safety, security, victory. To the ancients, seven represented temporary cessation, not final perfection, as some have thought. In Hebrew, the word for seven and that for oath are closely related, since the security and safety of a sworn compact were represented in Hebrew thought by seven. This number stands for the logical consequence of the ideas symbolized by the numbers preceding it in the series, a perfect life power working in the way outlined in the explanation of six cannot be supposed to fail. Omnipotence must ultimately, no matter what present appearances may be, arrive at a triumphantly successful conclusion to all its undertakings. The great work is as yet unfinished. The cosmic experiment has not come to completion, but when we consider the nature of the source of that experiment, the nature of the worker in that work, reason assures us that it must succeed, down to the minutest detail. The aspect of consciousness to which seven corresponds is called the occult or hidden intelligence. It's like it, it, it said that suffering is necessary until you realize it isn't. And then it's not. Number eight. I like this one. I've read this book once upon a time that an ex-girlfriend may disappear. And it talked about the uh, geometry, the base of Pisces, how to make them, and how cool the heptad is, because you can't really make it. You just got to get close to be like, all right, that works. But that one described eight as the number of transformation, which is cool. When you stack that up next to other interpretations of it being like a two-dimensional representation of the Tesseract being like a prison of sorts. So, the perpetual renewal intelligence, that's the devil card, would be a strange kind of prison indeed. Number eight. On the diagram, this is a figure composed of the upper and lower circles within the ellipse. In writing it, we begin at A, describe a descending S to B, and return on an ascending inverted S to A. Thus, the form of the figure suggests vibration by the shape of the lines, and alteration by the two kinds of motion used in describing it. It is also the only figure except zero which may be written over and over again without lifting the pen from paper. Thus, in mathematics, the figure eight, written horizontally, is the sign of infinity. Among its occult meanings are Rhythm, alternate cycles of involution and evolution, vibration, flux and reflux, and the like. It represents also the fact that opposite forms of expression, that is, all pairs of opposites, are effects of a single cause. See on this point Isaiah 45, verses 5 to 7. This, this number 8 is the digit value of the name 
IHVH. Remember we talked about that in the other video. Triple eight is the numeration of the name Jesus in Greek, and eight is not only the uh, dominical number or number of the Lord in Christian numerical symbolism, but it also, but is also the particular number of the god called Thoth by Egyptians, Nebo by Assyrians, Hermes by Greeks, and Mercury by Romans. Thus, the number eight is preeminently the number of magic and of hermetic science. Oh yeah, I gotta get more of those too. Its Hebrew name is Splendor, and the aspect of consciousness to which it corresponds is called perfect intelligence. The Hebrew adjective translated perfect is S lowercase h capital L capital M. That S was capital, by the way. Schlim, a noun spelt with the same letters, same letters meanings of peace, security, health, wealth, satisfaction, and thus refers to the perfect realization of the success represented by the number seven. So that's an interesting thing. It makes me think about how you have to finish things. Like, alright, let's, let's use a meal for example. You have a meal, regardless of how it starts, when someone else makes it, use a damn microwave, or you're actually a person and you cook your food, and it's delicious, and, you know, you're just about finished with it. You got like three more bites left, and you got this one perfect bite that you've been working on. It's got all the ratios, it's just the right amount of warmth. That would be your number eight, I guess. Because that's... It's like, that is why you're there, isn't it? For that moment. Unless you're purely utilitarian and you're just like, look, I need the fuel, I got shit to do. Number nine. On the diagram, it begins at D. Follows the upper circle down to the center of the diagram, continues back to D, then along the line of the ellipse on the right side of the diagram to E. As last of the numerical symbols, 9 represents the following ideas. Completion, attainment, fulfillment, the goal of endeavor, the end of a cycle of activity, yet because... 8 indicates rhythm as part of the creative process. Completion is not absolute cessation. The end of one cycle is the beginning of another. This fact is the basis of all practical occultism. Nobody ever comes to the end of his tether. Nobody ever reaches a point where nothing more remains to be hoped for, where nothing remains to be accomplished. Every end is the seed of a fresh beginning. In Kabbalah, therefore, the number nine is called basis or foundation, and corresponds to the mode of consciousness named pure or clear intelligence. Because the completion of any process is the pure, clear, unadulterated expression of the intention or idea which initiated that process. So number eight is like you just built the chair. And then number nine is you're sitting in that motherfucker having a sandwich. The number ten. I like the number ten. Fuck off. Ten combines the ellipse of super consciousness zero with the vertical line of self consciousness one. It is the number of perfection and dominion. R read from right to left, from units to tens as all composite figures should be read symbolically, it, su it suggests the outpouring of the limitless life power through the initiative, specialization, and concentration of the I Am. Kabbalists call the number 10 the kingdom, Malkuth. The mode of consciousness assigned to it is, th is the resplendent intelligence. Resplendent. I actually don't know what that word means. Brilliant, glowing, full of life and power. In one esoteric text, this mode of intelligence is said to have its seat in understanding. And understanding is the number three, or sanctifying intelligence. What 
is meant is that in order to have the resplendent glowing consciousness of mastery, one must have also as a basis the sanctifying, perfecting, organizing power of understanding. Our citizenship in the kingdom of heaven on earth is determined by the degree of our understanding. See, knowledge, you know, fucking right. Such is the outline of the ten primary numbers, according to ageless wisdom as handed down to us through the sages of Israel. It affords a basic clue to the meaning of the tarot. For instance, the whole book, or pack of cards, contains 78 pages. Interpreting the number 78 from the foregoing, we see that it represents the expression of the splendor of the perfect intelligence, 8, through the victory of occult intelligence, 7. Precisely, this is the great purpose of tarot. This certainly is an esoteric accomplishment. They're like, how do we put knowledge down in such a novel way that these mongoloids won't burn it and i guess they found out a cool way they're like look man you could just you can just turn it into a game and they'll, they'll gamble and shit and I, i'm being so speculative right now pardon me Ugh. in the practical work of the builders of the atatum the esoteric meanings of the numeral symbols have been expanded into a series of 11 statements or affirmations these are entitled the pattern on the trestle board because while they are at all times true of the real self at the heart of every human personality they are not intended to be taken as vain glorious claims to personal attainment they will aid the reader to re remember the main attributions of the numbers 0 to 10. More than this, they have, during the last 25 years, proved their value as seed ideas, which, planted in the mind by thoughtful and purposeful repetition, bear rich fruit in mental and spiritual unfoldments. So, okay, that's, that's what this joint's called. This is a trestle board. I posted a video a while back where I lay out the cards in a specific pattern and I called it the trust board, and that is incorrect. So, my B, my viewers, all 21 of you, I'm so happy to have you. The pattern on the trust board. This is truth about the self. Zero. All the power that ever was or will be is here now. One. I am the center of expression for the primal will to good which eternally creates and sustains the universe. 2. Through me, its unfailing wisdom takes form in thought and word. 3. Filled with understanding of its perfect law, I am guided, moment by moment, along the path of liberation. 4. From the exhaustless riches of its limitless substance, I draw all things needful, both spiritual and material. 5. I recognize the manifestation of the undeviating justice in all the circumstances of my life. 6. In all things, great and small, I see the beauty of the divine expression. 7. Living from that will, supported by its unfailing wisdom and understanding, mine is the victorious life. 8. I look forward with confidence to the perfect realization of the eternal splendor of the limitless light. 9. In thought and word and deed, I rest my life from day to day upon the sure foundation of eternal being. And 10. The kingdom of spirit is embodied in my flesh. And that's chapter two.